44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. And I am on the Dixie Belle page today. And we are going to do day one of Painting Kitchens Made Easy Peasy with Dixie Belle. Um, I know that a lot of you have contacted Dixie Belle about painting kitchens and how to do it and everything. So that's why we're doing it today. Um, first thing is you're going to notice that this kitchen behind you is a little larger than the average kitchen. Um, this one is not my kitchen. <laughs> I paint kitchens for a living and um, I paint furniture and kitchens and this is the one that I'm working on this week. And you'll notice that the doors and the drawer fronts are already gone. My husband and I came in last week and we pulled all the doors and the drawer fronts because I spray them in my shop. Um, now that's just the way I do it. I like to have that nice even spray on there. Um, but other people paint them in close. Do whatever works best for you, but that's how I do those. Um, a lot of people feel like painting their kitchen is a daunting task. And it's really not as daunting as you think it is. Just think of it like eating an elephant. That's what I told my girls growing up, one bite at a time. When you think about doing your kitchen, it's just like several pieces of furniture sitting side by side. So think about it like that. Um, the biggest thing you have to decide when you're getting ready to paint your kitchen is, what am I gonna do? Most people go neutral with the color of their kitchen. This kitchen is going to be a nice off-white color drop box. But most people um, go neutral with their kitchen. You don't have to, totally up to you. But that is the biggest thing you have to do is decide what color you're going to do. Your local Dixie Bell retailer, greatest asset you got. Because not only can they help you decide the finish, they can also help you estimate how much material you need and everything like that. So don't discount the fact that Yes, they are a retailer and they do want to sell you product, but most of them don't want to sell you anything more than you just really need to do the job. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we're going to be using in this kitchen because we're going to be painting it this week even though it's a little larger than the average kitchen. And we're going to talk about the things that you need and the things that you don't really need but they'll make your job easier. So before we get started, we're going to let you know uh, this is uh, Dixie Bell's cleaner. This is what we're going to start with today, but we're going to go over a few things first. Two heaping tablespoons into a gallon of water, pour it in a spray bottle, spray, 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 and then wipe it away. We'll go through all that shortly. Then we've got our Dixie Bell drop cloth, and this is our paint color that we're using. Um, we're going to use a Dixie Bell glaze on this. We're also going to use some Dixie Belle Gator Hide, which is our water repellent top coat. We'll be using a mister bottle because it makes it so much easier to paint. We're going to be using some brushes. Uh, we're going to be using a sponge. Um, and then we're going to talk about these two problem solvers, Boss and Slick Stick. And then this is what we'll clean up with. Okay. Ellen, we can't really do much about the echo. The house is empty. And uh, so we can't control the uh, echo, the sound. So uh, we apologize if it's hard to hear. We're doing the best we can. Sorry, guys. Um, seems like there's always something technically. Right. All right. Um, if you are not using your original hardware, you are going to run into an issue. And I brought an old door so that you can see. If you're not going to go back with the same kind of hardware that will fit in these holes, then what you're going to do is you're going to need to fill that in. And the best way to fill that in is to take caulk. Put a piece of painter's tape on the back of it. Put your 20-minute caulk into the hole, leaving just a little bit less. Once your caulk dries, then you're going to finish filling it in with either wood putty, Dixie Bell Swamp Mud, whatever you normally use. And once you fill that in, make sure that it's higher than where your, your surrounding wood is. Once it dries, it's going to compact. And if you leave it even when you start with, you'll have an indentation. You don't want to have that. So leave it a little bit higher. And then once it's completely dry, usually within 24 hours, sand over it and you won't have an indentation. But you definitely want to do all of that before you get started cleaning and painting. Let's see if we open this door if it helps with the edge job. 
See guys, we're in an empty house. Nobody lives here yet. They just bought it. And that's why we have a little bit of an echo. Uh, Rita wants to know if you could use Dixie mud. Yes, you can use swamp mud, but I use caulk first, um, no matter what, because my caulk dries in 20 minutes. So I use the caulk and get it to, to sit where I want it to, because sometimes if you just use mud or wood putty, it, it condenses so much as it dries that no matter how high you leave it, unless you leave it like unbelievably high, it, it'll leave an indentation. So I use my caulk first, and then once the caulk dries in 20 minutes, then I go back in with my wood putty. And plus, you know, caulk is like $2.50 or right. something for a whole tube, and your other stuff is usually more expensive than that. Okay, so now that's if you're not using your hardware. Now we're gonna talk about these two problem solvers because sometimes um, you, you don't really know that you're gonna have problems. The first thing that you do before you start doing anything is you tape and drape. I've got a, uh, a drop cloth on the floor, which is one of the ones that I like to use. It's got a plastic back with a paper top. Um, but I also use regular painter's drop cloths sometimes, just regular old uh, drop cloths. Rita, make sure, that if you're using caulk, make sure you use uh, Paint. painter's caulk, non-silicone. Paint does not stick to silicone, so you need to make sure you use paintable caulk. Yeah, if you use and the here's DAP. here's what she's using. If you use the DAP 20 minute, you can actually spray the DAP <clears throat> as soon as you put it on, but you can't brush it for 20 minutes. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're painting your kitchen is tape and drape. I cannot tell you enough. Um, I started over here. We're going to do a little bit on the floor, but you tape everywhere. You tape where your cabinets meet the wall. You tape underneath the edge of your countertops. Um, and we're going to do it a little bit here. You tape along the floor. Even though you've got drop cloths, you want to make sure that you tape and drape. All of these countertops, I'll put my tape up like you can see in the background over here. But then I'll take my roll of plastic. I buy a lot of plastic by the roll. And I take it and I drape every single surface. Every one of my countertops. Um, anything that's not being painted is taped and draped. And the reason you do that is, whether you're painting in your house or for someone else, I mean, you don't want anything to get messy. Right. And you may think, oh, I'll be very careful with that edge. But I'm telling you, accidents happen, messes happen. You will save yourself so much time if you prepare properly. Blue painter's tape will save your life. I'm telling you, it doesn't stick hard enough to pull anything off. And it's great for the floors too. Yeah, it's great for the floors. And I'll tell you something else that I have to have when I'm taping and draping is an exacto knife. If you don't have one in your tool bag, you definitely want one of those. It'll help you get your tape into your little crevices. It helps you give a nice sharp edge for when you're cutting those corners in and everything like that. And not only do I tape all along the floor, but then I'll even add little pieces of tape to hold my drop cloth in place so it doesn't move away from my edges. Now, a lot of it is because I am, um, you know, it's because I'm doing it in somebody else's house, but I would do the same thing in my own house. Here, I'm going to see if we can open this window and see if it helps with the echo. I don't know that we'll do it ways again. Look at the view, guys. <laughs> Who wouldn't want this view? I mean, come well, on. I think it's fine. I think it's better now with this other door well, open. We can't raise windows, so we'll That's have right. to have the echo. All right. So, now the next thing, if you tape and you drape, which, I, which like I said, we're going to do before we clean, then you've got to think about, um, these are very, very dark cabinets, but I did a test, and they're just going to paint just fine, um, because like I said, I've already painted the doors and drawers, but in some cases, you may not have that luxury. Sometimes you're going to be painting uh, laminate cabinets. If you're painting laminate cabinets, Slick Stick will make sure that your paint sticks. Slick Stick is a problem solver in that it helps you with uh, adhesion issues. Um, when you have uh, laminate cabinets or if you're painting your countertops or whatever and you're worried you've cleaned it or whatever, 
This is wonderful. All you have to do is put it on. Now you can put it on with a brush, or you can put it on with a roller, or you can spray it, whatever you'd like to do. But you just put on a coat, let that first coat dry for an hour, put on your second coat, and let it dry for 24 hours, and you're ready to paint. Now, this is a problem solver. It may not be necessary to do your kitchen cabinet, so don't misunderstand me. This is not necessary. This is boss. Boss blocks odors and stains. Um, if you have a set of kitchen cabinets like these, if somebody had scuffed these up or something because of the red undertone, they might bleed. Bleed through is when whatever's underneath your paint comes through your paint. And sometimes you'll get a bleeder. Oak will even bleed sometimes. The tanning in the wood, it depends on what kind of top coat. I mean, there's a million reasons why things bleed. You don't clean it well enough, whatever food stuff, oils. There's a lot of reasons why kitchen cabinets will bleed, and they will bleed. If you have a problem, if you do a test piece and you notice that it's bleeding, um, then... Oh, I'll distract you. What? <laughs> I was just going to oh. say that. Um, if you notice that, boss is the thing to do. Um, boss can be put on with a brush, it can be put on with a roller, or it can be sprayed. It's totally up to you. But please understand, these are just problem solvers. They are not necessary to do your kitchen at all. Okay, so now we have talked about problem solvers and we've talked about this big, beautiful kitchen. And now we're gonna start working on it. Um, when you're using the Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner, um, it is recommended that you wear gloves. Um, typically I don't. I'm not a wool follower ever, 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 ever. Um, usually not, but I'm going to tell you guys, do what they say, wear you some gloves, and um, we're going to push this drop cloth up here because after I get off the air, I'll have to finish taking and draping my big, beautiful kitchen, but I want you guys to see the way I clean. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this is the only way to do it. I'm just going to tell you this is the way that I do it. All right, we're going to assume that everything has been taped and draped um, because we're going to start cleaning. Dixie Bell White Lightning is a granular cleaner and it is so easy to use. Two heaping tablespoons into a gallon of warm water and after it dissolves, it doesn't take it just a minute, I throw it into one of these spray bottles. And the reason I use the big one is I don't want to confuse it with my water or anything else that I've got sitting around the shop. And this one controls the spray better. All right. I like to spray it on, and this is what I like to use to um, clean my cabinets. I use the yellow and green scrubby because I want to be sure that I get everything off. Now, down here is probably not going to be as dirty as some of the cabinets were because this doesn't really get handled. And you might think, oh, well, I'm not going to clean this. Don't make that mistake. If you don't clean it, then you may end up with something on there and it may take you days. It's easier to clean than to fix. It is so much easier to prepare properly than it is to fix. And so that's what I do. I clean everything really well. And sometimes if you have a really slick surface, you may decide that you want to scuff it a little with a sanding sponge. Be mindful, if you scuff through the original top coat, and it's got a red undertone like this, you may cause yourself more problems than you realize because you may have a bleeder all of a sudden. So now I scrub everything and I make sure everything has gotten some cleaner on it. And I like to let it sit there for just a minute while I'm scrubbing so that it kind of gets everything nice because Dixie Bell Cleaner has a deglosser in it. So it prepares your furniture or your cabinets, whatever you're cleaning, it prepares it to be. And then I have my old shop towels. And that's what I wipe it down with. And I have one to wipe the cleaner off with. And then once I put my rinse on there, I have another towel that I wipe them down with. Tony, White Lightning is a Dixie Bell product. White Lightning is a Dixie Bell TSP based cleaner, but it's more than just TSP. All right, so now 
I've wiped it down. But now Dixie Belle recommends that once you've cleaned, that you rinse away any residue. And so usually I just take my little water bottle and I spray the water on there and then I wipe it down with a different towel so that I don't reapply any residue. And I just like to speed up the drying time by wiping it down. I am not known for patience. All right. So now this is one panel and we have cleaned it and if you were here over at this angle you can see that there's a difference in the finish. Let's see if we can move over there. Got there's a difference a, in a the woman video and so it might <laughs> take a minute. There's a difference in the the way it feels and the way it Yeah, you can really tell. Hang on guys, let me focus. You can really tell if you look at that um, the bracket in the center and you see the line just to the left of the bracket, you can see underneath how it's more matte and it's kind of shiny above that. That's the difference. It's so, the only place I can really see it, obviously. But if you feel it, you can feel that my plastic glove wants to stick to this one and it moves well on this one because I've deglossed this panel. So what we're going to do this week, um, because I do have to get the kitchen done in the next several days, we're going to work on this. This is going to be my workspace for our lives so that I can show you exactly how the whole process goes. But we're going to give you sneak peeks of the rest of the kitchen because that's going to go on around us because I can't just work 30 minutes or an hour a day and get this kitchen done this week. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we do have everything that we're going to use up here. And I'm going to give you a little heads up. A lot of people use chip brushes for their painting. Um, and that will work. I'm not going to tell you a story. But that being said, there are things that make it easier. The brushes that I use, I use a lot of Klingon brushes. This is a Klingon shorty. I also use uh, chalk pro brushes, and I use um, Dixie Bell brushes when I'm painting. And it really just depends on whether you want synthetic or natural. Um, but these aren't necessary. They just make your job mm -hmm. a whole lot easier. And the bristles sometimes want to come out of the chip brushes. Yeah, the chip brushes are probably um, going to leave bristles on whatever you're working on. If I'm doing something as big as a kitchen, it's worth an investment. Now, I think uh, the chalk pro brushes maybe run about 10 bucks or something, whereas this one runs about 40. Um, and this one's above 75 or whatever. So if you're doing something big, it's definitely worth the investment in the brushes. Uh, Mr. Bottle. You can use a spray bottle from the dollar store like I do here for rinsing, but it puts an awful lot of water on your project where a Mr. Bottle just lightly mist your brush when you're painting. Um, so I would definitely invest in a Mr. Bottle. Um, the sponge. When you're doing kitchen cabinets, you can brush all of the top coat that you want to, but you can also invest in the synthetic silk sponge, and it goes much, much, much faster. Um, rolling, if you're, I've got two huge cabinets to roll the inside of, I could brush the inside of those cabinets, but why? Right. But if you get a roller, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Don't get a roller with an app. Get a Sponge. foam roller. If you don't get a foam roller, you will end up with texture to your paint job. Make sure you get a roller made for cabinets, and it is a very dense foam so that it gives you a nice, smooth thing. Now we're going to talk about a problem that a lot of people don't realize when they start kitchen, um, and it's painful when you don't realize it. This kitchen is very dark. So when you look at it, you think, man, this is a big kitchen. But what you don't see is every bit of that crown at the top of those cabinets, and everywhere those boxes, those cabinet boxes meet, there's a little crevice, there's a little line, there's a little nail hole, there's a little something somewhere. And because these cabinets are so dark, you don't see it. But guess what happens when I paint these cabinets a real light color? Every 
single, little, pin hole, nail hole, tack hole, joint, everything becomes glaringly obvious. So the reason we have this caulk is after I clean all these cabinets, the first thing I do is caulk. A lot of people don't realize it before they paint how important it is. But this want to show them what you're talking about? Yeah. See, for instance, where the crown meets the end frame, you're going to caulk there and, you know, possibly even like right here on these joints and where the cabinets meet because after you do your first coat, everything is going to stand out. Yeah, and if you don't do it before your first coat, I can assure you after you look at your first coat, you'll think, oh, I wish I would have done it. And the thing is, um, this Alex Fast Dry Caulk is what I use a lot of the time. You can pick it up anywhere. Big box store, Ace Hardware, whatever you want to pick it up, Walmart, um, Amazon, pick it up, do all of this. All you, all you need is to use this and baby wipes. I usually, I'm sure I have some here, but you want to wipe away any excess with a damp, a damp sponge, a baby wipe, a damp paper towel, whatever. Um, your finger if it's damp. Make sure that you wipe away the excess if you're using this and with a sprayer, you can spray it immediately. It's fine if you spray it immediately. But if you're brushing, you need to wait 20 minutes for it to dry. And I mean, it's, it's plenty dry in 20 minutes. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but there's a lot of things that have to be caulked in a dark kitchen like this. Mm -hmm. There, I would use this tube of caulk in this kitchen because there's so many tack holes you can't even imagine. But where the vent hood goes together, those little, where the wood butts up against each other, when they're using solid wood like they did on these cabinets, they don't have to worry about caulking because it's so dark that you can't see those little hidden crevices. But when you paint it light, all of those hidden crevices all of a sudden look very dark. So that's something you definitely want to address before you start painting because it just saves you time in the long run. So does anybody have questions? Does anybody have any questions? We're here to help. Because today, about when we're, any questions about prep? Today is about prepping and cleaning. Today, we're just talking about how you need to prep your area and clean. Tomorrow, we're gonna talk about actually putting paint on. Um, today is not about painting, because I'll tell you, um, even in a kitchen this size, I spend a lot of time prepping mm -hmm. compared to the amount of time painting. But the more prep I do, the faster my painting goes. Um, taking off all the hinges and removing face plates around microwaves and things like that. And usually we remove the panels from the refrigerator and such as that, but for some reason these don't want to come off. Yes, you caulk before you paint. If you're gonna to have to do multiple coats, you can probably do one coat first. Yep. And that way you can see better what you need to caulk. Especially and, if and you're Deanna, first let me show you, Deanna. Hang on, bear with me. I'm gonna to try to walk slow so we don't make you dizzy. But for instance, at the top where your crown meets the front of your cabinet, you're gonna caulk underneath that crown. Where else? Let's see. There's going to be seams. Where the base? Yeah, you may have to caulk the seams here. Yep. Right here where, where it um, joins because there's always and, a joint. And sometimes you Anywhere. have to caulk here. Right. Where the down base at, the, at the mold. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can find any place else but particular. Then this one, see the tack holes in the bottom? Yeah. I don't know if you can see because I'm on the ground, but and there's a light there. But there's always going to be like, you can see one right there, kind of to the left. There's always going to be some little tiny finish nail holes in a, a wood cabinet. I know it's the camera didn't want to focus, but... Uh, you're going to want to fill those in. Like and even like the base sorry. cabinets where the joints go together? Mm -hmm. Like right here at the bottom. See where those two cor those two cabinets meet? Right here. You're going to caulk there. Because but there's put, a gap there. Right. If you put a coat of paint on first, especially over dark, because you're going to have to do multiples. If you put a coat of paint on first, then you'll know it'll be very obvious where you need to... Uh, It'll show up. Yeah, where you need Especially to Especially if it's your first dark to light or light to dark, you'll notice immediately. 
um, where you need to call. Hold the caulk up again. Okay. Caulk. Make sure it is a paintable caulk. That's the biggest. Yes. That's Do the biggest thing. Do not get a White silicone caulk, right. caulk because if you get a silicone caulk. It's called DAP. Yep. Alex Fast Dry. Yep. Okay, does anybody have questions? And remember, if you opt to roll, like if you had something like this and you wanted to roll it, you're going to need to cut it in with a brush. But if you wanted to roll the, roll the wide panels, that's fine. But make sure you get a cabinet roller because if you don't, you will have texture to your finish. Right. And it's painful. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions? Questions? We have a link up. I want you to use your local Dixie Bell retailer for your product. If you can, if you have one, if not, we've got a link up where you can buy your products. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to send a private message to me at 44 Marketplace or to Dixie Bell. I'm happy to help. Um, and I guess if nobody else has any more questions, then... Okay, so today was all about prep, and tomorrow we're going to do what? Paint. Tomorrow is because we are going to have everything prepped by tomorrow. In fact, a little secret, part of this will probably be painted by the time you guys get back tomorrow because I've got a lot of hours between now and then. But we're going to we're gonna save this piece for you but guys. But this is going to be our workspace this week. Tomorrow we're going to do some painting because I want you to see the different ways to apply paint and the way it reacts. But today was all about taping and draping. Um, if you have problems, your boss and your slip stick may be needed. This kitchen doesn't need them. Um, and then it's about cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And then we do our caulking. If you want to do your caulking after your first coat, fine. Typically, I've done so many kitchens. I do it before my first coat. You know and, what you're looking for. Yeah, and it dries fast. So if I start down here and start caulking around, by the time I get back down here, I'm ready to paint. So um, we're going to leave this for our workspace, but everybody will get to see the transformation as it happens this week. Awesome. And if all goes well in the evenings, I hope to reinstall doors Friday or Saturday. Good deal. Thanks for watching, and I'm Pam at 44 Marketplace. See you later. Thanks, guys.